Okay, so this is the Visual Force in Lightning experience talk. Uh, my name is Mike Sen. I'm a Visual Force platform engineer. I work on the back end, so I'm going to be giving some demos today, and you are free to laugh at the UI design that I'm going to show you. Um, I've got three topics for today's session. Uh, the first is the variety of ways that you can use Visual Force in Lightning today. These are all the ways like tabs and page layouts and custom and standard actions. I'm going to be showing you a new beta feature that we have called Lightning Style Sheets. And so this is an attribute that can, you can add to your Visual Force pages that will style the pages like Lightning. And then also I'm going to show you how you can bring Lightning into Visual Force using Lightning Out and the Apex Include Lightning uh, component. I've got some forward-looking statements. And so the first topic is that Visual Force just works in Lightning. I'm going to show you all the different ways that Visual Force uh, works in Lightning today. And to show you those, I've got a little demo app. Now, I'm a big nerd, and I play Dungeons & Dragons. And so my demo app is a Dungeons & Dragons campaign role-playing app. Uh, so let me walk you through it here. The first Visual Force page that I have in my app is this campaign registration page. And so this is a, a Visual Force tab it's not really linked to a specific object or specific record or anything, but it fits well as like the entry point into an app where it's just a tab in the Salesforce navigation. And uh, in my demos today, everything with, that's within an orange dotted outline there is going to be a Visual Force page. And so that's how you can tell the difference between the Visual Force page and any lightning components that are in the rest of the app. So everything within the orange dotted outline, most of the page, is Visual Force. And so you can see some Visual Force page blocks, and you can see some images and the title bar up there. So that's a Visual Force tab. If I click on this little frogman right there, it'll take me to the record detail for this campaign object. And so this is, I'm showing you how you can use Visual Force in a standard lightning page layout as a small part of the page layout. You can see there's two orange boxes there, and so that tells you that that's Visual Force and everything outside of that is a Lightning component. And so this is the standard Lightning uh, page layout, but uh, I wasn't able to customize the page layout exactly how I wanted, so I wrote a Visual Force page to show a chart or an image. The next way that you can use Visual Force in Lightning is as the target of a quick action. So up here in the upper right corner of the uh, record detail page is this quick sheet button. And so this is a, an action that's related to the record that we're looking at that's going to navigate to another Visual Force page. Uh, so everything within the orange border is Visual Force, and that's most of the page. You know, Visual Force is taking up most of the page here. And so this is a, the target of a quick action where your users can go and, you know, take an action based on the record that we're looking at. And so I wanted to show the uh, the related list of players up at the top of the page, and then I wanted to have some, sort, some kind of a three-column layout below that related list. And so I had to use Visual Force to completely customize the way that this page looks. This wasn't possible with a normal page layout. And then one more way that you can use Visual Force in Lightning is uh, overriding a standard action. So a standard action would be something like I'm viewing a record, or I'm editing a record, or I'm deleting a record. And so if I go and view a specific role player uh, record, and so I'm overriding the view action here. And so it's, I'm kind of showing like a big picture of the player, and I'm also showing some information about the player down, down at the bottom using the Apex page block component in Visual Force. And so here again, Visual Force is taking up the entire page minus the navigation up at the top. And so all of these ways uh, are pretty similar to the way that Visual Force is used inside of Classic. And so you configure them the same way. You configure them in classic uh, through all the setup trees, and you, conf and you configure overrides. And any overrides that you configure uh, automatically get translated into Lightning apps as well. So that's the, the Visual Force pages I wanted to show. And then I also want to say that you can use Visual Force inside of Lightning using the drag and drop Lightning app builder. And so in this way, you'll take the Visual Force component right there, drag it to the middle of the screen, and then Visual Force takes up a small portion of the page, uh, and it's surrounded by other Lightning components all around, or maybe other Visual Force pages. And so this is a lot like the page layout, where Visual Force is just a small part of the page, but your users are viewing a much larger app around it. 
So that's the first uh, topic, the variety of ways that you can use Visual Force and Lightning. And that was just kind of to refresh everybody about all the different ways that Visual Force can be used. Next, I'm gonna be talking about a beta feature that we're working on called Apex Page. It's the Lightning Style Sheets attribute. And using this attribute, you can kind of completely revamp the style of your Visual Force pages to look and feel a lot better in Lightning. So as I was clicking around those pages, you may have noticed that they don't exactly look just right in Lightning. You know, it, it kind of feels like Salesforce Classic, kind of feels like last decade. And that's because we're using the Visual Force standard components that don't get updated year to year. And so there, there are some things that are just not quite right on this page. Maybe the font is wrong, or maybe the text size is wrong, or maybe the input fields and the buttons uh, look like Salesforce Classic. They don't look like Lightning. And so we're working on this feature called Lightning Style Sheets, where you can turn it on for a page and it'll kind of completely redesign the page. So I'm gonna turn it on for this campaign registration page here. Let me make it so I can switch that, okay. So I'm on the campaign registration page here and turning on the, the Lightning Style Sheets feature is really easy, I just type Lightning Style Sheets equals true. I save the page. And now when I refresh this page, you're gonna see a lot of things change. You're gonna see the, the title bar up there is going to change. You're gonna see this page block with all the details about the record are gonna change. And then the input field and the button are gonna be kind of updated as well. So I'm gonna refresh the tab and watch for that. Ta-da. Okay, so uh, yeah, like I was saying, a couple of things have been updated there. The title bar is now in all caps, which kind of follows the lightning design uh, guidelines there. Uh, the, the font is different for all of these fields. It's using the Salesforce Sans font instead of Arial. The input field is completely different now. It's, you know, it's a lookup field to like a related record. And the magnifying glass is inside the text box instead of outside the text box. Uh, and as well, the button has been updated, so it's not like the native browser button, but it's just been restyled a little bit differently, so it's got a, like a different background color and different font color. And so that fits the lightning design guidelines a lot better, which makes a big difference to some people. And it also makes this page uh, look a lot better in lightning. It kind of fits in with the rest of the lightning look and feel. Now, one cool thing about this lightning style sheets feature is that the users that are in lightning, this user right here, he's seeing the, uh, the lightning look of this page. But any users that I have in the organization who are in classic are still going to see the classic version of the page. So I'll go to a different user in this other browser window right here, and I'm gonna go back to the home page and then I'll navigate back to this campaign registration page just to prove it to you that this page is still, still looks like Salesforce Classic. It's still got the same look and feel that he's always used to. Nothing's really been modified on the page because he's looking at the page in Classic. If he were to switch to Lightning, he would get the new Lightning look and feel. So maybe if I resize this, you can see what I was talking about there where the, the input field looks a little bit different. You know, the magnifying glass is outside of the input box versus here it's inside and it's a simpler icon which is uh, what the lightning design guidelines kind of dictate. So I've got another page that I'm gonna update with this new lightning style sheets feature, and that was that quick action page that I had, where I'm looking at a record detail and I go to the quick action for the page. So this is looking at one specific record here. Uh, and I have, so let's see here, I have a related list up at the top, and when I enable the lightning style sheets for this page, that related list is going to get restyled. The button is gonna be a new, brand new button, and it's gonna be over on the right-hand side. And then also the three-column layout down below, you're gonna see the style for that updates a little bit as well. So I just come over here, and I type lightning style sheets equals true. I'll go ahead and save the page. Uh, and then when I refresh the page, you're gonna see all of those updates happen. This is a brand new page now. The related list has uh, been updated. The font is a little bit bigger. And like I said, that button has moved over to the right-hand side, which kind of fits better in with Lightning and the way that it's supposed to look. And if I go look at the page in Classic, we'll see a couple other changes as well. 
So this is a Salesforce Classic user, and so you can see he's still looking at the page in Classic. So what else has changed on the page? Uh, this icon in the upper left corner, and so that's the Apex section header component there. And so the icon has, been, has changed to be the lightning icon for this entity, for this object. And also, the, uh, the font here down below in this three-column layout that I had, the font has increased, and it's also a different font, subtly different. I think this is Arial over here, and this is Salesforce Sans. And so the font size has increased, which at certain browser widths kind of interferes with the way my app looks. Some, sometimes the, the text runs right up against each other, which may not be right for my app. And so this lightning style sheets feature here, uh, it's not something that you can just turn on for every page and expect to work wonderfully. You have to test it with the page, and have to, you have to test different uh, browser widths and different interactions on the page. But what's great is uh, the lightning style sheets feature kind of redesigned the page, but any, inter any JavaScript or click interactions I have on the page still work the same way. If I click on a, a, a different record, navigation to that other record works just perfectly. If I click uh, like a, a edit, an edit action or a delete action, it does exactly what it should do in Lightning. It pops open this modal dialog to edit the record. And so that works just perfectly. Uh, the page has been redesigned, but any interactions on the page have not changed. And so uh, this light, the Lightning Style Sheets feature, it gets us uh, most of the way there, maybe 70% of the way there, but there's still some things that we need to update. Going back to that campaign registration page, uh, there, there are some things that the style sheets were not able to accomplish. You can see that labels are on the, the, left, the left and right side labels, but in Lightning, uh, the Lightning design guidelines say that labels for a field need to be above the field. And so you'll see in Lightning page layouts, uh, that's, that's the way that the fields are labeled. So let me, look, let me look at a specific record here. You see that the label for the field is above the field. But on Visual Force pages, the label for the field is to the left of the field, which makes a big difference. And it's not something that style sheets can completely cover, but maybe you can write custom style sheets that, can, uh, that you can swap in and out for your Lightning users. So we saw how Lightning style sheets will completely redesign the page. Oh, I've got a couple other uh, notes here. So uh, when you use Lightning style sheets equals true, the styling definitions are different for your classic users and your lightning users, we saw that. Uh, you should also use standard style sheets equals true in any of your visual force pages, because if you set standard style sheets equals false, uh, that'll remove the lightning style sheets, because these lightning style sheets are Salesforce provided standard style sheets. Any <coughs> custom style sheets that you include in the page, like the custom style sheets that I had for that, those three columns, those are still included in the page. And so the new lightning style sheets may interfere with your custom styles, so you'll want to test any changes that you make to your pages before you roll it out to your users. And also, this lightning style sheets feature, it's still in beta, so it, the styles may change from release to release, and even once we go GA, it may change from release to release, so keep that in mind. But it's in beta, it's available for everybody today. You don't have to sign up for the beta program or a pilot program. Try it out in your sandbox, and maybe even roll it out to your users. So we saw how Lightning style sheets can kind of completely redesign the page, but you still want to include some custom style sheets in your page to maybe change, to make a couple more tweaks to the page. And so you can use the global variables av available in Visual Force, like dollar sign user dot UI theme displayed, to kind of make minor tweaks to your Visual Force pages when they're in Classic versus when they're in Lightning. So in this example I have down here. Uh, I'm conditionally rendering, I'm conditionally including an Apex style sheet component for my classic users versus my lightning users. In the first code block, I'm comparing user.ui theme displayed to theme three, and theme three means classic, and I'm including the classic style sheets for my app. And then in the bottom example, I'm comparing dollar sign user.ui theme displayed to theme 4D, and theme 4D means lightning desktop, obviously. Uh, I'm comparing that to Theme 4D and including the Lightning style sheets for my app. And so uh, th this is one way that you can include some style sheets versus other style sheets for your Lightning users versus your classic users. And it's not just style sheets that you can conditionally include. It could be any component or any field. 
I've got a couple more notes about developing for the Lightning experience. Um, everybody knows that you can go to your Visual Force pages by navigating to slash Apex slash your page name, but that's always going to show your Visual Force page in the Salesforce Classic context. If you're developing Visual Force pages for Lightning, you're going to have to create a Visual Force tab for your page and then navigate to that Visual Force tab. Uh, when you're developing Lightning apps, make sure to test it on every platform that, you're, that your users are going to be using, Classic, Lightning Desktop, or the Salesforce mobile app. And then also, uh, a lot of people have used the Visual Force development mode footer to develop Visual Force pages and Apex classes. And so those are st the, the development mode footer is still available in Classic, but it's not available in Lightning Experience, which is why I was making tweaks to my Visual Force pages in the uh, developer console. So the developer console pops out into a new window here, and you can launch it from the gear setup in the upper right corner of Lightning, the developer console up there. Okay, so that's the, the beta feature, uh, lightning style sheets equals true. And I was, so I mentioned how it kind of gets us 70% of the way there to converting our Visual Force pages to look and feel great in lightning. But the way to get the last 30% of the way there is to use lightning out to bring standard and custom lightning components into Visual Force. And so this next demo, I'm gonna be showing you how you can use lightning out to bring uh, a standard component a standard lightning component into a Visual Force page so that the Visual Force page looks a, a lot more like lightning. And so the lightning component that I'm gonna be adding is this uh, force record view component right here. And so one of the Visual Force pages that I was showing had a big, large white space in the upper left corner. And so I thought it would be great if I could bring in the force record view component, which shows the mini layout for a record, and kind of put it in that white space there. And so, uh, the force record view, I think it's a new component to the winter release, which is available, or maybe the summer release of this year. Uh, and so you can add this to your pages using Lightning Out. Uh, to use Lightning Out in Visual Force, there are three steps. You have to create a Lightning dependency application. You have to load the dependency application in your Visual Force page. And then you have to create any Lightning components in the Visual Force page. So let, I'll go through those steps. So I created the dependency application ahead of time here. And so this is a Lightning dependency application that kind of defines all of the Lightning components that I'm gonna be using in my Visual Force page. In my case, there's only the Force record view component, but when you're working on your Visual Force pages, there may be other Lightning components that you wanna include, or even custom Lightning components. It doesn't have to be part of the standard library. And so I'm defining a, an Aura application here that extends from Lightning out app and that kind of defines that this is a lightning out application, and it's gonna be using force record view. And then I can include it in the character sheet uh, visual force page. Let me go to that visual force page. Uh, this one. Let me go to this one. Yeah. So uh, here's the Visual Force page, and I'm gonna be putting the, the component in this large white space up here. And I don't like to type and talk at the same time, so I'm just gonna be copying this code and then going over it. I'm gonna put it right here. So let me go over this line by line. Uh, it, it, here's, here's where the white space was. I'm, I'm using the apex colon include lightning component. And so this loads the Lightning Out library into the Visual Force page. It's just a little bit of JavaScript. And it also connects it with the Salesforce servers to be able to load standard and custom Lightning components. Next, I'm gonna have a div element right here. And now this is an empty div element. It doesn't have any styles or classes associated with it, but it does have an ID. And so you may ask yourself, why do I need an empty div element if it's not gonna have any style? Well, that ID is gonna be used later by Lightning Out in order to kind of fill in the empty div with that standard Lightning component. And so I'm giving it an ID here called fill in character details because Lightning Out is gonna fill it in. And you can see that it's referenced later in the code here. So I have that empty div element. And then I have a little bit of JavaScript to load the standard Lightning component and display it in the page. The first call that I'm gonna make in JavaScript is to dollar sign lightning dot use. And so this is the lightning out call that loads that dependency app that I created. So it's a dollar sign lightning dot use that character sheet dependency app, which is the name of that dependency app that I created previously. 
And then I also pass it in a callback function that's gonna be called whenever that dependency app has been loaded and is ready to start creating lightning components. And so that callback function uh, I'm gonna call now. Uh, and so the, the first thing that the callback function does is it de defines any attributes that the lightning component needs to have during initialization. And so we're using the force record view component, which has two required attributes. It, has, it requires a record ID. And so I'm passing in the record ID of that role player object that we're looking at. And it also requires the type of record that you want to look at. And so we want to look at the mini or the compact record layout here. You could also look at the full record layout, which would be like the lightning page layout. But we just want to look at the compact layout for the record. Then we call $lightning.createComponent to create the full lightning component. Uh, so the lightning component that we're creating here is part of the standard library. It's force record view. We're also gonna pass in any attributes for the component. And we pass in the, the, the DOM ID of that empty div that we created previously. And then I pass in an empty callback function. And so this callback function could be used if you want to bind any click handlers or something like that to your standard component or to your, to your lightning component. But I don't need to do that in this case because this is a, a read-only component and there's no interaction with it. So I'm just leaving an empty callback function here. And so when I refresh this page right here, you're gonna see that that force record view, that standard lighting component is gonna be loaded in this white space up here. There we go. So this is, one, this is the, the way that you can get your Visual Force pages to really look native to lightning by loading in native lightning components into the page. And so you can see it loaded the, the information about the record, it loaded the, a couple of fields, and it loaded the right icon, the custom icon for that record there. And so that's, uh, so combining this with the Lightning Style Sheets feature, you can make your, make your app a lot more native to Lightning. So let's go ahead and turn on Lightning Style Sheets for this page to see if that, messes, if that uh, interferes with any of the customizations that we've done. So Lightning Style Sheets equals true, and I will refresh this page. And there, the page has been redesigned. And if we take out the, the orange border, the page looks a lot better in Lightning, and it kind of looks native to Lightning. Uh, and, and, so, and so this is the way that, without having to learn how to write Aura components, without having to learn how to write Lightning components, keeping your existing Visual Force customizations, you can make Lightning apps. So we had three steps to include Lightning out in any Visual Force page, so I'll go over those three steps again. The first step was uh, reference a Lightning app. You create the Lightning out dependency application, and we just had de we're depending on Force Record View here. <laughs> step two was uh, include Lightning out in your Visual Force page, so you use the Apex include Lightning component, and you say do dollar sign lightning dot use, and then your dependency app name there. The third step was to call $lightning.createComponent to create any custom or standard Lightning components that you want inside the Visual Force page. And passing in the, the, the name of the component, any initial attributes for the component, and then a DOM ID for the component. And I really like this function call because it's very similar to the way that you dynamically create Aura components in a custom Lightning component, except in saying $lightning, in Aura you say $A. So some of, you know, some of the design paradigms or the code can be reused between your Lightning components and your Visual Force pages. So there we go. The, that was the three topics that I had for today's sessions. Uh, the, the variety of ways you can use Visual Force and Lightning. I showed you all the ways that you can use them in Classic that also just translate into Lightning. I showed you the beta feature, Apex page, Lightning Style Sheets equals true. And then I also showed you uh, how you can use Lightning Out to bring Lightning components into Visual Force. I think we've got some time for Q&A here. And if you have more questions about the Lightning Style Sheets feature, make sure to stop by the Visual Force and Lightning Experience booth downstairs in the Developer Forest. It's in the back right corner of the Developer Forest. And there's some really smart guys there who can show you uh, all, the different, all the different components that get restyled when you enable uh, Lightning Style Sheets. And any code that I was using is going to be up on GitHub. Thank you.
Yeah, uh, so there's a mic up here if you want to jump up here. So I wanted to ask if you could maybe show the view record uh, piece again, where if you have to, like on a standard controller, if I'm doing something with the ID of a record in Visual Force, right. I have to like already have that record either use the standard component or the right, yeah, use the standard, standard controller, controller or, or, a, or a custom Apex controller, yeah. So are you just grabbing an ID and passing it to, to, that, to that view record component and it's like doing that work for you? Oh yeah, absolutely. So let's go back. So this little expression right here is a, like a visual force expression. So when the visual force page loads, it sees this uh, brace bang syntax which is kind of like a Ruby style string interpolation there. And so it takes, the, it takes the role player record that we're looking at, and so we have the standard controller for the role player, and then it takes the ID attribute from there. And so it kind of substitutes in the ID for the record whenever the Visual Force page loads. Yeah. And, and so could I use that record ID to pass in some unrelated ID and it would go and get that information. Yeah, yeah, it would, it would, it would load any, any record ID for any other record. Yeah. Awesome. So. Cool, thanks. Yeah. Thank you. In, sure. in, in Classic, when you, um, when you look up, when you, when you have a lookup, you right. cannot create a new record from that lookup in Lightning you can create a new lookup. You can create a new um, record when you click the lookup icon. If mm -hmm. you take a visual, if you take your Visual Force page and you do Lightning style sheets equals true, and you click that lookup, does that also enable the ability to create a new record? Oh well, let's give it a shot. Let's see what it does. So we had that lookup field on the campaign registration field. And if I click the magnifying glass, it does the same thing that it does in Classic, where it pops open the separate lookup page here. Let's see here. Well, there's no new button here. So it may not give you the opportunity to create a new record from here. No? Uh, oh, well. <laughs> Was that available in Classic to Classic users? No? It is in Lightning. Oh, 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 okay. So it's it's a Lightning lookup, and so I guess you would want to use something like a command button to execute a Lightning action from there, if you wanted to redesign that. Hmm. So yeah, I guess it's not available in a Visual Force page straight out of the box. So if I'm so if I'm porting a Visual Force page um, that makes sort of extensive use of third-party JavaScript libraries, uh, what do I kind of need to look out for as far as being Locker Service compliant if I place that onto a Lightning page? Well, I'll let Farhan answer that question. Farhan is the Visual Force and Locker Service product manager, so he'll he'll be able to answer that a lot better. Uh, so. As you know, Visual Force is iframed into Lightning experience. So because of that iframe, uh, Locker service is not applied to Visual Force, uh, even in Lightning. So if you port over your Visual Force pages with JavaScript, you don't care about Locker service. It's only when you create custom Lightning components that's when Locker com service comes into play. Oh, that, that sounds good. It sounds a lot easier than. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. yeah, Visual Force is really separated out from the rest of, you know, everything inside the orange border can't really uh, interact with components that are, it, that are out inside the orange border. So Visual Force is separated from the rest of the Lightning experience. And so that's, that's the locker service boundary there. Thank yeah. you. The GitHub repo seems to be empty. It's empty right now, yes. Uh, it's empty right now because I, I, I forgot to push all of my code uh, last night, so I'll be doing that sometime today. Mike was out drinking last night. That <laughs> I was out at the concert last night. Any more questions? All right, thank you, everyone. <laughs>